What's up fellow BTS fans? This is Ahsoka. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I had a little fun with the intro previously and then I realized I showcased my address on the uh, on the package so I had to restart it. Uh, as long as I'm having fun, hopefully all of you are having fun. Um, so this video is going to go over two things. One is going to be a package that I got in the mail. So just kind of doing a little video proof as well. I'm going to be grading it for a friend. Uh, Stefan, talk to him a lot, use the comments on the videos, chat with him on Instagram. And he actually purchased a first edition base pack from PokeRev uh, during the same box break that I did. I don't know whether or not he got a heavy pack, but uh, we're going to grade that pack. And I'm going to do it for him, help him out with his collection. Maybe he can make a profit or do something like that. But here is the package. Other than this right here, I just ripped right now. So fully sealed. I'm going to go ahead and rip it, get into it. I believe he was lucky and got a, uh, let's see if there's any information on Okay, nope. There was a, uh, a chance to get, you know, one of the three artworks. And he was lucky enough to get the Charizard. I could be wrong. Hopefully my brain is working like normal. Let's see here. I promise I'm being gentle. But yeah, I'm gonna be grading this. And this is actually my first pack grading. I've had the desire to do it over the years and just had never done it. I always ended up selling my light packs and I just always miss that opportunity. I think it's a great opportunity now if you're sitting on the packs, especially if you've got boxes and you're doing box breaks. There's plenty of opportunity to grade these packs and they're doing, I mean, a lot of them are selling well over what a light pack or even an unweighed pack would do if it's, um, what do you call it? If it's, if it's unweighed, man, my, my brain is, uh, or not unweighed, but PSA 10. My brain's a little fried. Uh, I haven't been making too many videos lately. Have a lot to do. Got a PSA returns that's sitting on my, my shelf. And I also got uh, cards going out to Troll and Toad for the Evo program. Got cards going out for the grading program. Cards going for the binders. Jeez, this is a lot of tape. All right, let's see here. Yeah, he's got a um, supporting it really well with a uh, top loader, so just cut on the outside of that. All right, nice. There we go. So I don't think he kept it in the. Actually, I got. I have to take a look at mine whether or not Pokey Rev had signed the pack or if he signed the sleeve that it came on. So there you go, first edition base set pack Charizard artwork. I mean, I'll probably weigh it out and give him the idea because if it's heavy, I mean, he might as well just sell it heavy compared to um, trying to hold on to it like this. But yeah, that was a fun pack opening, really exciting. Definitely not the best financial decision that I had made in the last year, probably one of the worst ones. But uh, other than that, I I'm pretty happy with the experience being able to be a part of something like that uh, kind of before it all sort of took off. But yeah, this will be going off for grading. I had to determine the level because I'm not that experienced with it, but I am pretty experienced with PSA and it shouldn't be too hard. So, uh, Steven, this is going out for you and hopefully we'll be seeing it soon. So let's get into the rest of the, the video going into Troll and Toad EVO program. So originally I'd wanted to hold on to a lot of these cards. Hopefully these EX reverse hollows would increase in value. And uh, honestly, as I'm getting closer towards finishing my EX series goals, which I swear one of these days I'll eventually show it off. I, I just kind of getting a little, um, try to forbid myself from getting burnt out. And I think, uh, collecting and selling at the same time is definitely just, uh, it, it, it takes a toll, especially with two other jobs and school and stuff like that. So, uh, very grateful for all the opportunities that has brought, but I, I want to kind of push to finish my collection goals and then just, again, turn this more into a side business and then down the road kind of do something like um, Charlie Herlocker had done where after building up the business, he was able to buy a lot of cards. I think he sent off like 30,000 cards to get graded, cost like 300,000. He bought a PSA 10 Charizard, bought artworks, has trophy cards, and he just kind of bought that after he built the capital and built up the inventory. So that's kind of where I'm at now is like once I finish my main EX series goals, which is just the EX cards and a complete Unseen Forces set, hollows, uh, the reverse hollow rares and the unknowns, I'm basically like missing like one card from the EXs, uh, two cards from the hollows and three unknowns. And at this point I know where basically all of them are. So it's not a big deal. I uh, just got to pay for a lot of cards. So 
Uh, let's go ahead and get into Troll and Toad Evo. So first thing I'm doing is sending off this big lot. Uh, one of the guys that I purchased a, I was a near complete emerald set and I think I paid like 600 bucks. It was great because I got uh, Deoxy's speed form from Emerald in a PSA 10. Cards worth about four to six grand. It's kind of hard to say, uh, but in here, lots of these cards. I mean, these are basically just like pack fresh uh, for the bot, for the packs. This guy, I don't know what he did, but he basically just put all of the cards inside of, let's get it to stick here, open. He basically put them all in these nine pocket pages and just jammed them full. But if you look on the back here, I actually might keep these ones. I think I have them for, I have another binder set. I think about two or three um, emerald uh, near complete, complete sets over the last year. So, I mean, you got nine tails there, great artwork. I have nearly two complete reverse hollow sets and just, you got all these cards, they're packed fresh, they're great condition. Uh, as much as I would like to sit on them, this isn't doing anything for me. I think I mentioned previously, I do. I still kept this card in a PSA 10 from when I graded it years ago. Uh, but back to the, the point of this is that, what am I doing with a lot of these cards? You know, it's just, I talked about, and not really criticized, but mentioned how other people were looking to wait to grade stuff with certain companies and the strategies that I was using where I was grading certain cards with CGC and then saving, say, the hollows and reverse hollows, cards that in a PSA 9 are worth around $100 and they just weren't worth sending to PSA at the moment. So it's just shut down. So I figured it would be better for me to keep one card for a binder set and then after that, just continue, continually flip it. Because if I were just to sit on these and, you know, in raw bulk cards, I'm probably sitting on about 50 uh, grand worth of cards. Ooh, actually there's some uh, rares in there. Ooh, nice. Actually I have a Team Rocket return set in here. I didn't even realize that. I should probably take a look at these to see if they're, um, eh, they're near mint, mint to mint, but maybe not after I drop them. Uh, so let me, let me get my, <laughs> so basically I figured with that 50 grand worth of inventory, I would keep a complete set from all of the, the EX sets that I had outside of the EX cards. And I figured that, you know, if, even if it's half of that, you know, that 25 grand, that instead of waiting for that to say double, I can essentially just take that money, send it to Troll and Toad, get money back without having to do work while I'm in school and doing my other jobs. It's a, it's a passive income, you know, like what Warren Buffett mentioned about if you're, if you're, Oh, I'm trying to remember the the stuff. What is the quote that he says? It says, if you're not making money when you sleep, you're going to work until you die, basically. In a sense that. So, you know, if you're if you're making money and you're not... Bring this closer to you guys. Uh, if you're not making money when you sleep, you're essentially just going to keep working until then. That's a great artwork, Kazuki. And so I figured it's better to actively flip and look for collections, which I had passed on previously. You know, I, I picked up... Uh, I picked up 50 EX series hollows and reverse hollow cards for about 300 or something dollars. And there was Delta Species, Mewtwo, Rayquaza. Those were 75 to 100 bucks a piece. And there was a bunch of other cards. So I more than doubled my money. And there was other lots like that that I passed on over, over the time. Ooh, more rares. <sighs> Thought it was a... Hair looked like a crease, but it's not. I love this artwork. Lots of great artworks. So... This will be helping other people collect their sets. And for myself, I'll be able to flip this money faster, kind of turn it into a business. And, you know, down the line with a little more capital, I'll be able to afford, you know, what I was looking at. You know, a lot of it was potentially a house or maybe even some other cards in the collection and trophies and things like that. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to do with this. And so this is just kind of documenting stuff. You know, those were uh, emerald, fire red, leaf green. Uh, here, same thing, I bought a Fire Red Green set from that guy, and this is basically, I grabbed all the starters, Charmander, Squirtle, um, Bulbasaur, and basically took those ones that were perfect mint, flawless, and sent them off to grade. And then this is just the bulk. I mean, this guy opened up probably a box or two worth of cards and just kind of just kept all of these there. So you've got Bulbasaur here, Poliwhirl. Just lots of these cards, just pack fresh mint. These are, by the time you see this video, the cards are already, I mean, this is like half the Charmanders. Oops, this is like half the Charmanders. So by the time you see this video, they, these things are long gone. So you don't 
please don't bother asking about it. Uh, that was another thing with Troll and Toad. The benefit of it, at least from my perspective, I'll have to give a review on it, you know, post uh, 60 days. Then from there, you know, looking at half a year and then a year and just kind of seeing how how was it? Because it's gonna take about a month for this to get inventoried and processed and listed on their website and eBay. And then after that, you know, we'll have to see how the sales come in. You know, did I price them accordingly? So there's a, there's a lot of learning that will be happening in that time. And I'm sure the learning curve will be steep in the beginning, but after that, I think I can get a handle on it. I already know how to find collections and I already know how to, to price things out in my head without having to do research. But if I did it, it would come across a lot easier for me to pick up these collections. So this box has a few hollows, nothing crazy. I graded most of those things. Some non-hollow rares from Wizards of the Coast sets and just commons and uncommons. Some of these cards are worth quite a lot of money, honestly. And a lot of these were from the sets that I graded and there was only a small flaw with some of these cards. So Sabrina, Giovanni's Pinsir, Dark Arbok. I mean, you got Pidgeot, Kangaskhan. So a lot of these cards are just first edition bulk. Just lots of, I mean, these things are going for two, three, four, five. Uh, Cubone, I think that's going for like five bucks on Troll and Toad. And these are great condition. I mean, most of these would have graded a nine and I just didn't send in anything. Kind of hard to see with the blue background, but corner, no edge wear. Surface is clean. I mean, so a lot of these cards are great. It's unfortunate that Trollto doesn't have like a near mint mint um, condition setting, and they kind of all get lumped into near mint. And near mint can be, I mean, I, I somebody picked up a PSA 10 Milotic raw. Um, well, eventually got PSA 10, but they picked it up raw from Troll and Toad and it was near mint. So it's it's honestly a crapshoot. You don't know what you're gonna get. You know, life's like a box of chocolates, I suppose, with uh, Troll and Toad. And so that part sucks about it, but you know, I don't have the time to list all these cards to deal with questions that people ask. And it's just so much easier for me. And, I, and I'm able to find a lot of these collections a lot of the times. And there's like a 30% markup on it. Sometimes I'd usually try to aim for half. So just some black and white reverse hollows. I picked up, I believe I got a few black and white master sets. Nothing was worth grading. So I just kind of kept a few of the cards. Cosmos, Hollow, Blastoise. And then here, just black and white. Then modern cards, just cards that weren't worth grading because of one nick or slightly off centered, things like that. Lots of these. I mean, I these aren't even worth my time to to sit down take a picture and then somebody want to negotiate and package it up you do not have to deal with any of that so paying six cents a card to ship to put these in and have these sorted through de-sleeved and everything else it just it's it's great you know i don't have to worry about much some secret rares picked up a few of those nothing worth grading kept a few cards that i'll put in a binder eventually but yeah, that's what's in those. But the good stuff, though, for those of you that stuck around, the good stuff is coming up. Uh, let me put all this away. And technically, I mean, I don't even have to organize this. <laughs> I could put it away in whatever haphazard way. I don't want to be a jerk to the, the employee that's kind of sorting it. So I'm trying to keep it somewhat organized and easy for them, you know. All right, so let's get into the good stuff. So... What I'll be sending, the big stuff I'll be sending is the two, nearly the 246 hollows and reverse hollows that I picked up from that seller. Most of these are moderately played to excellent position, and we'll see. Lots of squirrels here. Where's the squirrels? There's a squirrel. Big ol', that's like a double squirrel. So, I mean, this is just, you can see in the, in the light, definitely very scratched up. Those get moderately played, but again, I paid about $4 a card. Some of these are better than others. Some have like little cuts on it. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, this is just a kind of a testing ground, throwing everything I can, throwing the kitchen sink at Troll and Toad to get them to see what these are. I have, I have a feeling that some of their excellent, some of my excellent and lightly played cards may uh, be graded as near mint. And if, if so, some of these cards are 20 to $40 a piece. So even if these are moderately played, they're still in the eight to $12 range. So well, it'll be interesting to see how that comes across with the payment. Just, I mean, look at this. Just imagine seeing this, but mint condition. Uh, this would just be nuts. 
all these dark steelix. Let's get the pillow swine. Yeah, don't worry about these. These are I'm not gonna sleeve these. Just these are already messed up. There's really no point in me sleeving it. Togetic, love this artwork. More pillow swine. <laughs> it's just it's just ridiculous. Uh, I am a, the only downside to me getting rid of all these cards is just I like having a lot of these reverse hollows. I like just I just kind of like enjoying hoarding them. I've never really been somebody that hoarded cards and stuff like that. So, and I always question like why you do it, but just having like, you know, a 5,000 box, not full, you know, cause there's kind of like top loaders and storage stuff in between, but it was just kind of fun to have all these little boxes full of these EX series cards, hollows, binders, and all sorts of stuff. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's gonna, that's the downside of it. Komiya artwork right there. Those are like 30, 40 bucks. But yeah, just I'm gonna miss having just this many EX series cards. It's just all reverse hollow right here. And this is just Team Rocket Returns. I still have uh, about a, a complete set and a half, and then there's about another stack of 50 of better condition, usually near mint. Those ones are near mint to mint, not like PSA near mint to mint, but like PSA 7 to PSA 9. Oh, some awesome artwork. Um, so yeah, this <laughs> this is just absolutely ridiculous. And again, this isn't gonna, I don't think this is gonna flood the market or anything like that. It's just, this is just moderately played to excellent condition cards. More Mareeps. These right here, I imagine even these in very lightly played condition are still gonna be probably $10 cards. Side Duck as well is up there for whatever reason. Kind of a goofy artwork. I like it. Squirrel right there. Larvitar. Onyx. Ooh, this one too. I've seen these. For whatever reason, these ones, these Kimura ones seem to go for a little bit more. More Kazuki artworks, Slowpoke. Yeah, just <laughs> an absolute ton. So those are the um, ones that I'm sending in from Team Rocket Returns from that binder I purchased. So other ones, let's see what else is going to be sending in. Yeah, this is going to be a long video, so hopefully uh, you enjoy seeing a lot of cards. I picked up about 20-something EX Dragon pre-releases. I'm gonna send in a few of these. I'm still not sure how many. I have 10 that are grade worthy. These ones are mint, but there's a, like one or there's actually more than one white spot on these. So I'm gonna be sending in some of these. Great condition. Some guy ended up finding like 30 or 40 of them. Somebody else picked up 12, I picked up like 20. So, <laughs> so there's a few other people out there. Uh, that's towards uh, Unseen Forces, second reverse hollow set. And again, now that I'm sending stuff to PWCC, you know, buying this for two or three bucks, buying and winning on auction cards that, you know, normally I'll be like, what am I going to do with it? Now I can think about, okay, if this ends at 50 to 70% of Troll and Toad's price, sales price, I can pick it up and just send it in. And eventually it'll be worth, you know, you can make 25% on whatever you send in a month. And you do that for several months. I mean, over time, that's a huge compound interest right there. I mean, normally... It's, uh, they say the stock market increases 7%, 7 to 10% a year. And at 7%, it takes, ten, uh, what is it? At 10 years, it takes seven years to 10% per year. It takes seven years for your money to double with compound interest. So with this, it'll definitely do that up until a certain point. I don't think if you're in the millions that you could buy lots like this on eBay and, and make significantly more money looking for cards on eBay instead of just letting it passively sit there. So for the moment, I'm just sending these cards. These I picked up for about uh, six or seven dollars a card. I think this one's like 20 bucks on Troll and Toad. I only picked up three minty copy, you no, know, four minty copies from the 50 cards. So I've got a squirrel there in the corner. Some of these are like, I don't know, five to eight bucks. Unfortunately, these are like PSA 8 quality, probably PSA 9. But just not gonna send them in. Deoxys, Flygon. I think I lost the auction recently for like twenty something dollars. That one, I believe, theme deck version. Crobat, Mewtwo, and Rayquaza. You see here, like those are these are fifty to seventy bucks each, and I paid three hundred something for the lot. So it's just a great pickup, and I think if I can keep doing this for the meantime, that it'll be great. I'll, I'll be able to increase my ability to pick up stuff that I was passing on before. Got a squirrel there in the corner. 
and another one right there by the head. I might change those out for my binder copies just because I like the, the position of the swirl. And then some unknowns. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm hoping to do with that. Let me set this over here. And even more, so I'm probably gonna send this one off. Somebody was kind of taking forever on getting on getting back to me with this. This is a, this is the second near complete Unseen Forces. Well, I have one complete one and one near complete Unseen Forces reverse hollow set. I got the non-hollow portion as well. So this is going for alligator. I think this one's mint condition. I already have a 10, so I'm just, I don't feel like sending it in. I mean, just, this is just ridiculous. I mean, I remember picking up some of these Typhlosions for 15 bucks a piece. Vaporeon was going for more than that, but Typhlosion seems to be selling for like 40 to 50 bucks. Oh, the cars are so fire, the fire department's coming by. So yeah, just lots and lots and lots of <laughs> reverse holo cards. So this is about 105 cards with some unknowns. Some of these unknowns actually go for quite a lot. I wasn't sure why, but for whatever reason, the exclamation mark and the question mark go for a lot more. You got the squirrel up there on the top of the question mark. So yeah, those go for a lot more. I think on Troll and Toad, they're selling those for about 35 to 50 bucks depending on the, the seller, whether it's Troll and Toad itself or one of the uh, Evo sellers that's on there. So that's another 100 cards. And then last but not least, kind of getting over 20 minutes here, got, these are 400 count boxes. These are sleeved. So these aren't gonna be completely 100. They aren't gonna be 400 exactly, but this is the last batch of EX series reverse holo cards I'm sending in. So all this reverse hollows. Just stuff I was able to pick up in lots over the, the year. Let's see if I can get this light. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, not really, can't really show it with the light here. So let me. Yeah, way too many cards on my desk. It's kind of hard to get through all of this. That's another reason that I'm getting rid of it. Just too many cards. Fire red leaf green. I think I have another master set coming by as well, so that's why I'm letting go some of these. Just because I already have a master set. So lots and lots. Delta Species, Komiya artwork. I love this card. Don't have it in a PSA 10, Larvitar. And then again, more Delta Species. So just Delta Species, Emerald. Just absolutely metric ton of reverse hollows. And again, this is still just half that box and there's a whole other box as well. So yeah, I know the video quality is kind of going down a little bit. The lights really aren't shining that brightly over here. Need to be like Rihanna and shine bright like a diamond, but they're not doing it. Swampert, I mean, eh, that one's kind of damaged. We'll see what happens with that. Again, there's some cards in here where I'm like, ah, I don't know if I would send those in, but I'm just gonna test it out, see how it does with it. Salamance here. Yeah, I, I have no idea where the hell I found most of these cards anyway. There were so many different eBay sellers that were selling lots. And if the cards weren't mint condition, I just set them aside basically and, and put them in a box. <laughs> and then eventually the box just kept getting bigger. I kept getting more boxes. And yeah, so that's basically what happened with that. Let me go through more. Holy crap, this is a lot. All right. Ooh, that's a nice card actually. Let's show it. Some unseen forces. So not only was there that near complete set, about 105 cards total, but I guess now here is uh, even more unseen forces cards. <laughs> so lots and lots of unknowns. So yeah, I think I might be getting close to rivaling Rusty here with some EXs though. I was getting close, but uh, I don't have the financial ability squirrel right there to sit on a lot of these cards even more hollows i just figured you know what? what's the point of hoarding all these cards there's way too many uh theme deck hollow lugia more ho-oh theme decks 
Vaporeon. I think at one point I was up to 10 something Vaporeons. So yeah, just lots and lots of Unseen Forces. So that's all those. It's crazy to think that the card in the background, I don't have that one actually yet. Uh, Suicune from Team Magma vs. Team Aqua sold for like $10,000. So if I, if I gave up quite a few of these boxes here in bulk, I'd be able to afford one card with it. <laughs> Prices have definitely gone crazy, so. Let's see, what else do I got? I think there's one more box here. All right, coming on the 30 minute mark, lots of stuff. All right, more Team Rocket Returns. Let's see if I can. Oops. Let's see if that helps. Eh, a little bit. <laughs> Let me see if I can. I'm trying to figure out my lighting situation right now. It's not the best. So more Team Rocket Returns, just an absolute metric ton. I mean, going through it now with the video, it's I'm kind of astounded that I was able to acquire this many Team Rocket Returns cards, Unseen Forces. I obviously pushed for certain cards. Team Rocket Returns was harder than other sets to acquire cards from. Everybody was always going after these cards as individuals. And the, the key for me was buying these in lots. A lot of people seem to have put these up on lots and they went for a lot cheaper than they would if they were individually listed. So that was kind of like a trick there. Um, and so me selling all this be a lot would basically defeat the purpose of me having bought them in lots in the first place. So last bit that I will showcase is this stack right here, about 150 cards or so. This is EX Deoxys. Uh, I have, I don't know how many, I got some more coming as well. So let's see if I can, there we go. So the Reverse Hollows, Theme Deck, Metagross, Theme Deck as well. So just lots and lots uh, <laughs> reverse hollows, hollows. I have a complete set as well. I think the only thing I'm missing is a few hollows from which I graded mostly. And then I think the Pelipper from uh, reverse hollow rare. It's a Kamiya artwork. I don't know why I don't have it. I don't think I would have graded it back then. I wasn't really into the artwork back then. So that's, I think that's it for a complete set. So all of this is basically duplicates. And so from what I've from everything I've shown, I at least have one more copy uh, here with me. So for now, putting together complete binder sets and anything that's not gradable is basically getting sent to Troll and Toad. So we'll see how this goes in, you know, I'll give like a 30 day update or actually probably a 60 day update would be a little better just because they'd have 30 days to get the items online. I would have time to review the prices and give it about a month to see how sales go with that. So in total, I think I'm sending somewhere around $15,000 worth of cards. I might push it a little bit more towards 20,000 just cause it'll be nice while I'm going to school for the next four months and then MCAT studying uh, and work and everything else in life. I'll have a nice steady stream of income coming in as well. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, when I have time, I can buy just collections online, lots, Instagram, Facebook. And then when I get ready, send out a box to Troll and Toad, have them deal with it. I don't have to deal with it at all. It makes life so much easier. The cards that I want to grade will get graded. Those will be easy as well. Kind of sucks that PWCC, uh, as of today, is not really on eBay anymore. They're kind of having their marital dispute, as I call it. And that's, you combine PWCC, Troll and Toad Evo, you kind of don't have to do very much, honestly. And then if you're using a third party grader, which I kind of think that's the direction that they want things to go, is where you're grading with PSA. You buy from a, the, a distributor who's connected to PSA. You have your stuff basically sent to you or sent to somebody, opened and sent to PSA. Then it goes straight into their sort of vault system. So they're sort of taxing you or charging on that one as well. Then they basically sell it through their own system as well. And then from there, you know, if you want to use your money, 
through them to pay for something else. You know, there's just they're trying to make it where it's a one stop shop. And there's some things that I like about that other things that I don't, but if I can minimize the amount of work that's coming through from my end, that makes things a lot easier, especially when you're trying to set up a passive income, which even though this will always require work, me finding collections, the passive aspect about it is absolutely huge. Taking photos, doing research for the prices, shipping the items out, making the listings, communication, all of that stuff, it's huge. So for me, this is a great thing. I'm going to see where it goes. Hopefully it goes well. And I clearly won't d blame Dan, uh, God of Catch Em All Collectibles, for anything that goes wrong whatsoever. But I may bug him a lot with some questions. <laughs> so this was my Troll and Toad Evo uh, shipment review for my first one. Hopefully you guys were able to see some of the stuff. Uh, it seems like the, the quality is a little better now, but with my hands in front of it, it kind of gets a little darker. So got to fix that lighting situation. But without further ado, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you that stops by. Until the next one, peace out.